Hey everybody, welcome back to Global Conflict TCG. Ryan here with you. So it's been a minute. I think it's been close to five weeks since I put out the last episode, last devlog episode. So welcome back. Uh, been a minute. So let's get you guys caught up to speed where I'm at on this game. So took a couple weeks off, had a little bit of burnout issues, which I think is probably common anytime you work in Unity. So uh, keep in mind on that kind of stuff. Like it's it's easy to get burned out. So I'm back at it. I've been working on it the last couple weeks. Um, let's dump, let's just jump into the progress I made. So since I left off, where I left off, I had finished off the drag and drop system, and I was working on like drop zones and making sure, and just really kind of finishing out the starting process. So the last couple weeks, that's where I spent a bulk of my time. Um, also, if you might have seen in probably all my videos, um, my card assets. They were always like a like a square or like a rectangle type card with pointed edges. And so another thing I ended up doing this past like week um, is working on the 3D models in Blender for the cards themselves to get them to actually look like actual TCG cards. So let's take a look at some of this stuff. So we can take a look at the game board here. Um, not much has changed yet. I haven't added any, any new effects or um, any new... Um, assets I still have the same kind of so have the same factory um, same bases looking kind of thing for now um, eventually I will update this and I'll add some more stuff some more uh, particle effects and animations and things like that um, but I haven't really focused on this too much but let's take a look at take a look at one of the card assets so let's do that now um, so like I said I actually built I built a version of these cards in Blender, and you'll see what I mean. So if I just throw this guy out here in space, uh, let's see, there we go. So we could take a look at what this guy looks like, and it's actually, it's the same card, um, but it's actually a 3D object of the card itself. So in Blender, went into Blender, made a, a cube, looked the shape of a card, did rounded edges on it, um, like a normal TCG card or normal, like, you know, trading card. Um, so you can see it looks a lot cleaner and it's actually um, a front and back card. So like if I take this thing and I just go ahead and roll it over, you'll see what I mean. So we got the face of the card and bam, got the back of the card. So it's actually like it's its own game object, which is cool. Something, this is something I've been meaning to do for quite some time. So I finally got it done. It's like actually like a, like a card. It's like a real card. <laughs> so, so spend some time on that. Um, I'll probably do a video on how I did it um, at some point. There's other videos out there that show you, but for the heck of it, I'll probably show you guys just how I did it. It's really simple. Um, but that's something that I spent some time on. Also, with that, spent some time on the card images themselves because that has changed. Um, and actually, now that I th think about that, um, I had to go through pretty much my entire card set and really revamp that enti the entire set itself because of the way this game in unity is starting to shape up um, i'm gonna do a separate update video for global conflict separate from this video and i actually plan on releasing it simultaneously with this devlog update so if you're watching this devlog and you're interested to see the actual cards themselves and what i did to the set I actually reduced the number of cards um, that is going to be in this game initially um, if you're interested in that and you want to see the cards and, and everything that I did, um, go ahead and check out the next video. I'll go ahead and bookmark it, or if not, you'll see it at the end of this video. I'll have it bookmarked there. But um, I made some pretty drastic changes to the game. And they're really changes that I don't think I would have actually known to make until I really got like knee deep in this project inside of Unity. So just kind of like lessons learned. I actually built my TCG long before I started working on this in Unity. Um, but I'm starting to see some things now where like I need to make some updates and some changes to make this project a little bit easier to get off the ground because I'll be honest, what I had before, um, it was a heck of, it's a heck of a workload. There's a lot of work to do. So I showed you the card assets, made those cards, um, those in Blender. What else did I do? Um, I am work also working on the AI or the computer side of the board. Um, let's show you what that's going to look like real quick. So we'll just go ahead and turn on. We'll turn on some. We'll turn on the drop zone mesh renderers for now, just so you can see um, all of the spots for player two. And then if I go to player one objects, you'll see same thing, um, just opposite side of the board. We'll turn on the mesh renderers. So this is what 
pull out the game board, you can see the positions of the cards. So these are all laid out now. So at this point, where I'm at in the process, I'm actually working on player two side of the board or, or the computer side. Um, that, you know, it takes a little bit of time. It's, it's what's kind of, so I'm done with player one, but now just working on player two. Um, at this point, I'm right at the point where the computer has to start making its own decisions. So the next step in the process is to build the decision trees. Um, I did it once before already on my previous project uh, a couple months ago, so it shouldn't be that hard. I'll just have to do like, can't really do any copy and pasting, but I'll just have to kind of like work simultaneously and, and copy what I did on the previous one. But yeah, th these are the positions of, of the objects on the board. So like each one of these, tr these rectangles you see are uh, going to be some kind of drop zone or a place where a card will be on the board. So like these four boxes in the middle are going to be your active spots. Um, these four in the middle towards the rear are going to be your bench spots or your base. Um, you got your deck, your discard pile, uh, base upgrade slot, and then prize cards. So been working on that. So we'll go ahead and turn these mesh renders off because I usually don't like looking at them. So let's do that. Take those off. All right. Um, next up, let's go ahead and start the game and you'll see what, what I do have going for now. So let's do that and go play maximize. And actually, I think we might. Just a second, it's got firing up. There's going to be a little bit of background music. I, I kicked down the volume just a little bit. There we go. Um, so yeah, I have a little bit of background music again. <laughs> Went and added the audio manager. Um, we'll kick this down some more just that way you can hear me. Um, got the coin flip. I showed this in the last video. Same thing. Doesn't matter whether you click heads or tails. It's going to be random, but we'll go ahead and play along. Hopefully we win and we did not win. So we lost the coin flip and the computer decides to go first. So the newest thing you can see right now is that... Let me kick the volume down a little more. Um, the the game object cards themselves look totally different. To, in my opinion, they look a lot better than what I had previously. So my previous cards were actually, um, they were like two images like stacked on top of each other inside of Unity. <laughs> that's, that's really all they were. Um, it was pretty, pretty basic and really not the right way to do it. This way, um, these are actual game objects, like I said, that I made in, made in Blender. Um, they're the real deal and what you're seeing now I have the hover over mechanic so when you hover over the card you see the new version of the image that I have with the rounded corners it actually looks like a trading card um, so that's you know of course that's part of the prefab itself um, some other new things from the since the last video I have banners now that I bring up um, you can see here it says choose one or two units to put in your active position um, these are kind of nice. They're just ways of giving messaging to the player. Um, I may not be done with these yet. Like I'm still, I, I probably have to come back and maybe add some fade to the background or something, but we'll see. Um, some other things you can see. So as soon as I pick up a card, that banner goes away. I got a couple of particle effect boxes here that just show you where to put your cards. So I'll just go ahead and drop one in there and then they disappear. And at this point, so in the logic, I can go ahead and drop another card in my active second active spot, or if I want, I can go ahead and click done. Um, in this case, I'll just click done. There we go, that box disappears. Next banner pops up, asking me if I wanna put any basic units on your base. Um, click done when finished. So I'll do that now. We'll go ahead and drop some units there. We'll drop another unit there. Another thing that I worked on too, um, and it's all the, you know, when you're building a game like this, it's all the little things, so a little things such as like, what if you take a card out of your hand, right? And say, oh, you know, I actually don't want to drop this card. So you just drop it anywhere and then it snaps back to your hand. So like little things like that are things that you have to figure out um, and actually like take a while. <laughs> they take a while to actually, you know, get to work right. So you can see now, yeah, if I, if I take this and I drop it anywhere that's not a drop zone, it's just going to snap back into the hand, which is exactly what you want. So we'll go ahead and we'll add that. Another card. Another thing that took me a little while to figure out is now that these bench spots are base spots, um, in my previous 2D project, I actually was using um, a single drop, like a single drop zone to handle the four cards. 
um, where on this project I actually switched the four individual drop zones um, I did that mainly for um, for the purposes of, of handling like the child parent child relationships when I start doing things like like promoting units and things like that it makes it a little bit easier to have just the individual drop zones um, but what makes things a little bit harder is when you actually need to count the cards in your bench area so that was a little bit tricky I had to do some had to do some math functions and get start like you know adding up drop zones and and you know seeing if we get to a cap of four or not so long story short I ended up figuring it out but the cool thing is is if I drop another unit on this last remaining drop zone it's going to know that I have four units on my bench and that we're ready to proceed or I could click the done button I have an out for that too but you'll see what I'm saying if I just go and drop that BAM so now at this point in the logic we're technically ready to start the game from the player one side as you can see on player two um, they haven't put any cards out yet they haven't set up their their side of the board um, and that is because I haven't built the decision tree for the AI yet so that's the next step in the process um, also too we could see that the um, the hand for for the opponent has it we can see their hand which is not we shouldn't be able to see their cards um, and another thing too um, their actual deck object disappears so we got to find out what the heck happened with that but um, this is where I'm at in the game so you can see the cards look better the the images are nicer they look more like trading cards the objects themselves are better um, I really like the 3d kind of um, the way the 3d objects stack on top of each other it looks like an actual deck um, and then I have some particle effects gunshots rockets planes that was in my last video um, I will add other stuff too like I'll, I'll have burning buildings I'll probably do some characters that roam around the map um, shooting randomly <laughs> probably stuff like that but um, this is where I'm at at this point we'll go ahead and click off um, you know like I said I took a couple weeks off um, and then the last you know little over a week or so I've been hitting it hard again and, and trying to progress the game um, like I said stick around for my next video because I'm gonna talk about like the car the actual like like core changes to the game that I'm making um, what I could tell you reducing the number of cards um, that I'm gonna have in the base set and really being cognizant of the attacks and the different things that I'm gonna have to script for um, for the base set I was able to kind of re reduce my workload enough to where I think it's gonna it won't take me quite as long to finish this game the way I had it originally with with 80 cards or even a hundred um, I was looking at months and months of work um, especially for myself I work full-time outside of this so it's you know and all the other things you have in life it, it gets tough so um, that's it you know I hope you guys enjoy this stuff uh, it's not really too much to show off other than the the game objects themselves and kind of where I'm at with the game board um, and just some of the logic um, let's see we could you know before you go I mean we could go ahead and bring up these one of the game managers real quick here's the player one start manager I'm gonna increase that so you can see it's starting to take shape looks a lot like my first project I know this is kind of like spaghetti <laughs> there's a lot going on here um, but at least I do have everything color-coded I have everything um, with titles laid out um, and it works it works flawless it gets you through the entire start process this is um, and actually one thing too about like unity and playmaker this is actually the one of the only FSMs that I have um, outside of probably the decision tree for the AI where I'm going to have like a lot of states and kind of like this spaghetti code that you see where there's just lots of different paths. Um, I just felt for the start for the startup process it made sense since it all goes in sequence it made sense to have it in one FSM but when I get outside of the start portion of the game and actually get to the game manager, the turn manager, the attack manager, all of those I think are a lot I use a lot better practices where I have like a smaller more manageable game manager I have a turn manager for each player that handles their a certain aspects of the turn I have attack managers I have attack scripts for each special attack so like that is better it gets more modular once we get out of the start phase so just if in case if you see this and you think man what the heck is this guy doing trust me I know like I know this looks crazy um, but I only do it for the start portion because it really is like an entirely scripted event of the game so 
that's my reasoning for that. Um, so I think we're going to cut it here. Um, stick around for my next video. Like I said, I'm immediately done recording this. I'm going to hop into the actual cards themselves in Affinity. We'll talk about the 50 card set, talk about each card, talk about attacks, um, role in the game, things like that. It's popping up on the screen any second here. See you on the next one.